I now request my technical team to show us the film on our next guest of honor, Dr. Anil Maheshwari. Dr. Anil Maheshwari is a professor of management information systems and director of Center for Data Analyst at Maharishi University of Management, USA. He teaches courses in information systems, big data analyst, leadership and marketing at the university. He received a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi and his MBA degree from Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. He went on to earn his PhD from Case Western Reserve University, Cleveland, Ohio. He has also been a professor at the University of Cincinnati and City University of New York and has worked in the global IT industry for over 20 years. He has authored many books in data science and leadership, including two textbooks published by McGraw Hill. He is a practitioner of Transcendental Meditation and TM Siddhi techniques. He was awarded with the prestigious Maharishi Award in 2015. We are delighted to welcome Dr. Anil Maheshwari. Please put your hands together and welcome Dr. Anil Maheshwari, Scholar and Associate Professor, Maharishi University of Management, USA. I request Dr. Anil Maheshwari to say a few words. Namaskar. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venama. All glory to Maharshi Mahesh Yogi and his Guru. I will talk about the technology of the interior and I've in including the technology of interior i will include how you teach the technology of the exterior like data analytics big data etc one thing i wanted to say people had said what uh, what is a teacher in earlier era we used to be called guru what is a guru and what is the difference the word guru got differentiated as scale went up over a period of time there is the teacher who takes knowledge and teaches to others. There is the researcher who cognizes new knowledge, produces new knowledge, keeps the whole world exciting. There is the mentor who guides you what to do in life, where to go in life. There is also administrator who runs the whole ashram. So those roles have got more stratified. I would also say in the Vedic knowledge what is a Vidyarthi? Vidyarthi cannot be a Sukharthi. Sukharthi cannot be a Vidyarthi. Jo Sukh chahata hai, Sukh ki talash mein hai, wo Vidyarthi nahi ban sakta. So anybody looking for an easy way to get a degree and then sort of say I've got education, wo, that person is not really a Vidyarthi, not really a, a student. That is the environment in which we are working. But here is, what is the goal? What is the end goal of all education? What is the end goal of life? What do the parents want for your children? What do you want for your children? What do I want for my children? Bliss, happiness, happy life. Is that not true? Yes? We all want happiness for ourselves and for others. So if there's one thing you'll remember from this talk is that this gentleman came and talked about bliss. What I'm going to tell you is that Bliss is achievable here and now. It's all inside us and we can use the technology of the interior to create bliss for ourselves, access the bliss within ourselves and share it with others. So as gurus, as teachers, as researchers, let's go produce millions and billions of blissful people. That is what will attract people to pursuing the right thing, when they see the bliss coming from that, when they do the right thing. I do have some charts, so I will talk about that. 
Um, I also wanted to say I heard that Indian education is bad, this thing is bad. Yes, in some ways it's bad, but there are pockets of excellence. And uh, of course, competition is severe. I personally benefited from going to a couple of the best places in this country, and things are wonderful there. And those models should be replicated and, and uh, improved on. So I think best is to appreciate what works and try to replicate instead of um, essentially um, focusing on the one, other ones. So in terms of uh, technology delivery, I think Bhumika talked, others have talked what it takes. We know technology uh, distracts as much as it enables. It allows us to do good things. We can create new content. We can create animations, simulations. We can reach anybody, delivery is better. Uh, so what's happening is technology is unbundling the role of education. Your message, the knowledge of a particular tool, a particular tool in IT, a particular skill of cooking matar paneer can be available by itself on YouTube, yes? Do you access videos to do how to fix your tap or your car or your scooter or make Mutter paneer, yes, you can access that. That is some kind of education. So that's unbundled, and universities may or may not teach that. So what should the universities teach? What do we as teachers do? How do we add value? And therein comes the, how do we create bliss for ourselves and others, right? We want to be happy, creating happiness for others. That's where this concept comes from, wholeness. Be whole, operate from wholeness. So please chant with me if you can, those who can, who know this mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 What that means is that world is wholeness, the world inside is also wholeness. From wholeness comes wholeness. And when you take wholeness out of wholeness, what remains is also wholeness. So when you take out wholeness out of yourself, you're not any lesser. That's the nature of wholeness. And what is wholeness? Wholeness is our consciousness, who we are. We are Atma. Atma is the infinite consciousness. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, what is natural law and will... Um, so I've chosen a topic of how to teach from natural law. Nature. Nature is ultimate. Nature is totality of who we are. And nature works according to certain laws and principles, right? Uh, that includes scientific laws that people like Einstein in, uh, discovered, or their laws that co were cognized by our ancient rishis and others. So all these things, the totality of natural law, if we can teach from the totality of law, then we cannot go wrong. And how do we get access to this totality of natural law, which could be infinite? It's in our own consciousness. We work according to the laws of nature. And rishis have discovered that our nature itself is a representation of the totality of the natural law. So, nature, so natural law resides in us. It is the perennial truth. When we lead from truth, it gives us bliss. When the students learn truth, they, they feel blissful. Next slide, please. So this is the nature of consciousness at one, what are the signs of consciousness? At one level, consciousness is Advait, non-dual. We are. We are Atma, we are connected with Paramatma, we are infinite, we are blissful. At the level of, let's say, signs or concepts, it is the knower, the subject. It is the known, the object, and it's also the process of knowing. Because consciousness is conscious of itself. It is self-aware. When we look at ourselves from that perspective that we are the knower, we are the subject of knowing, and we are the process of knowing, then it becomes so much easier to teach wholeness. The truth is different at different levels. What we as a perceiver see, some, uh, and what we see ourselves when we are an object of uh, perceiving, we are different. So at each of these stages, as knower, process of knowing, and known, we are different. So those are limited perspectives. But if we can connect them back all in our consciousness, back in the consciousness of our students, then it becomes whole. And wholeness brings bliss. 
So no matter what you do, work with bliss. How do we get there? So next slide, please. Here is a little bit of a diagrammatic approach to what I'm talking about. Uh, on the right side, what we see, you see on the bottom, uh, on the top um, thing, I described three components of consciousness. The knower, the process of knowing, the verb, and the known, the object. Usually the old style instruction is on the right side, which is that we as a teacher are giving what's already known, facts that 2 plus 2 equals 4, sun rises in the east. That's known, we teach that. Now this whole paradigm right now is this idea of learning. Enable the learner to make sense of the world, help them integrate, teach them critical thinking, how they can bring it all together. And what's happening, the load on the mind is a lot, especially when the field is multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. The subject brings together people from many fields. How does an artist interact with an engineer? How does a cook interact with some other field? So that is the essence. So on the left is this idea of the knower. Our goal should be to develop the knower. The knower is the one who should have the capacity to absorb the totality, more and more wholeness. They should be curious to know the whole world by themselves. Let's move to the most, uh, the most important principle of um, lesser natural law. Next slide, please. It is that knowledge is structured in consciousness. The world looks to us the way we are. If we are happy, the world will look happy. If you are blissful, the world will look blissful. If you are not, then the world will look different. So from the consciousness, the wholeness comes wholeness. And as I said, uh, um, as a teacher, we, our goal should be char to charm the person with the wholeness of the subject. What does it mean in totality? Connect the whole thing together, and then people love it. And then develop students' ability to experience the wholeness. Next slide, please. So here's one example. Now I'm going to connect with my field, which is data analytics. Uh, expression of wholeness. So data analytics, and many of you know, it's a very, very hard, cutting-edge field. And then in this case, uh, there is a field called business intelligence, which is the idea of making, helping business executives to know what's going on in the business. And at the bottom row is this idea, data mining. Take data and mine it for patterns, knowledge. How do we connect those business domain and the technology domain? So we created this sort of linkage, a diagram, a cycle. And what it says is business is the act of doing things to achieve some value for somebody. Everything you do is recorded. It becomes data. Data is mind. It generates knowledge, intelligence. That knowledge is represented and communicated to the business executive who, if he or she is courageous, acts on that knowledge and the business grows. It generates more data, more mining, etc., etc. So in these models, please try to show as much dynamics as possible. This charms the students. They know that business and technology are all together and helps the business grow and technology also grows. That makes sense. Next slide, please. In this slide, the other dimension is that not only that you see the blue cycle is similar to what I showed in the previous slide, but I superimpose another layer, the red layer, which is what becomes big data. In that one, there was a term called data. Now, how does data become big? So there is a model of four Vs, volume, velocity, variety of data, veracity of data. So this is one cycle superimposed on other. It still keeps it whole, keeps it all connected. Do not throw simple snippets at them. Internet can do that. Google can do that. As a teacher, our goal is to give them wholeness so they get the benefit of totality. Next slide, please. So this is one of the books that I wrote. It was uh, for about 18 months, number one bestseller in the world on Amazon. And it has got translated in Chinese and other languages. But it operates from wholeness. The, the idea is to give people a sense of wholeness. They, whether you're 80 years old or 80 years old, you should be able to read that book without jargon. That is the why, that's how this book was written. And it's been published by McGraw-Hill, and it's a textbook in India. Uh, final slide, please, one more slide. Yeah. Now, this is final slide. A few natural law principles. One is the most important one I said is the knowledge is structured in consciousness. A few other principles is truth is one. It's expressed in many ways. If he says this is what I see and she says this is what I see, do not think that one is wrong or one is right. People have different ways of what they look. Uh, nature is found in layers. I showed you the example, data, big data. There are layers of data. 
At one layer, da big data is also data. At another layer is a different kind of data. And so on and so forth. You can see nature of life is to grow. We all want to grow. Who doesn't want to grow? The person, the bird, everybody wants to grow. So help the student grow. And so these are some uh, rules I'm sharing with you to help understand consciousness. Uh, okay, one more. The recommendations, just final one. Uh, you can, I will not read out. Um, the idea is that natural law is a new tool to help connect with yourself, the consciousness, help you grow, help your students grow, develop into wholeness, feel the bliss, leave bliss with your own uh, students. And like Scott Harriet, my colleague, said in the morning, uh, it's about teaching that fourth state of consciousness where everything connects together. So you should try and learn to meditate or some way to transcend and help your students transcend also and develop a feel for the wholeness of totality of knowledge and this will give them bliss you will feel the bliss and the whole world will be blissful thank you have a blissful day thank you thank you very much dr anil maheshwari ji thank you very much for your thoughts and it's absolutely right what you mentioned knowledge is structured in consciousness and probably that's the reason